Welcome back, everybody. Happy New Year. What a way to kick off 2023. Everything is pumping across the board. Crypto is having a great last week. Uh, and now we're going to kind of look into where we're headed to next. Is this a bull trap or are we headed to lower lows going into the first half of 2023? So we're going to take a look at some charts and then take a step back and look at some more macroeconomic factors that might play into price action. So let's hop really quick into the Bitcoin chart first. Now, what I want to cover really quickly are just a, a couple of points, right? Um, so obviously, this last little uh, parabola that we're seeing here, this little bit of growth is just kind of this last week. And we've seen, you know, quite a sizable movement, you know, almost 30 uh, percent in the last 10, seven to 10 days or so. Um, but a couple of key levels and a couple of key notes that I want to highlight here. So first of all, I think one of the biggest and maybe least talked about uh, levels and points to this chart is the fact that we have not yet gotten back above the high before the FTX fallout. Um, so to get to that, we want to break, you know, 21, 7, 22 convincingly. You know, we saw a little bit of the, the high part of the candle touch 22, maybe just a little bit above for, you know, a little bit less than an hour. But we need a convincing move above 22 before we're going to see any noticeable um, you know, bounce here off of this and then going further, right? I think one of the biggest keys is that we need to get above this uh, pre-FTX uh, fallout high. Uh, if we can do that, then things look a lot more bullish in my opinion. I think the other point to uh, make here is that I've seen a lot of people calling for a potential double top here uh, as well. And while it doesn't look like a you know textbook double top, it, it technically still could be. Uh, and typically, you know, when we see a double top pattern, that uh, predicts a move to the downside. Um, but you know, if that actually were to occur, we'd probably be looking at you know somewhere between 18 and 19k for that downside target here in the short term. Um, but the other point I, I want to make here really quick on this chart is taking a look at the simple moving average and the RSI. So this yellow line here is the 200 day simple moving average, and it's at about 19.5 right now. And so what I could realistically see is potentially getting rejected off this pre FTX high coming back to that moving average and then maybe going up again. Um, that would be kind of more of a, a bullish scenario, right? And then maybe in that second time we break that uh, pre FTX high. But it's really, really hard to say where we're going to be going right now. And that's why I want to dive into some more macroeconomic factors. Um, but looking at uh, the RSI, this has me a little bit more concerned as well. So two things have me concerned. One, we haven't been able to penetrate that pre FTX high and our RSI is completely off the charts and overbought at this current moment. So, you know, we're looking at something like 87 when really overbought is around 70 on the RSI. If we go back and look at what happened when the RSI was this high previously, we saw quite a big sell off, right? So this RSI uh, high right here in the overbought section uh, led to, you know, a about a 31% decline. And what's interesting about that is if we were to play that out over here on our most recent time frame. And let's say we drop, you know, 30, 35 percent. We're actually coming back down right to, you know, ish around where we had our low. Right. So about 15 two, maybe 15 flat. And that's a potential. Right. I mean, we, we've we've gotten to this point so quickly we can easily revert and go back. So something that I'm watching is the RSI as well, along with that 200 day moving average and the uh, pre FTX high that we need to break at about 22 K convincingly. Um, and then after that, we'd be looking at, you know, 28, 28, six, 28, two as our next really big leg to stand on, on the Fibonacci retracement. So now we're going to go into a little bit more detail around where this money is coming from and, and why we've kind of seen this pump recently. So on the bullish side, and then we'll kind of get into some more negatives in terms of what's going on macroeconomically. But on the bullish side, we've seen quite a uh, positive flow of institutional money coming into both Bitcoin and Ethereum and actually Solana as well. But you're going to see most notably Bitcoin here at $10.1 million just this week from institutions. And you're going to see those institutions up here. So we're seeing pro shares, we're seeing coin shares, um, we're seeing coin shares XBT um, and CI investments and a few others. And so we've seen 5.6 million in weekly investments from institutions in Ethereum and 10.1 
million in weekly investments from institutions in Bitcoin. Now, that's important because obviously institutions are what drive these larger pumps, right? It's not you and me, you know, DCAing our, our Bitcoin uh, at $250 a week or, or whatever you're doing at $500 a month. Um, that's not what's pumping up Bitcoin, right? It's these large, large whales or large institutions that are buying multiple Bitcoins at a time. Um, and that's what kind of drives that price up, right? And creates those trends. Um, now going into what we're looking at more macroeconomically, excuse me, in 2023, I wanna get a little bit more specific about the headwinds we're facing, right? And so as we kind of take a look at what other hedge funds and money managers are saying, really what we need to pay attention to is the broader market equities, uh, and what the Fed is going to be doing, right? Because equities tend to drive the market, right? If we take a look at uh, the SPY chart here really quickly before going back to that article, really it's hard for Bitcoin and the larger market to be decoupled right now, maybe in the future once we get that final Bitcoin minted, um, but right, or sorry, mined. Uh, but right now it's really hard for Bitcoin and uh, for Bitcoin to separate from the larger market, right? So if, if Bitcoin pumps, you know, we see a market pump. Um, and, you know, Bitcoin, obviously having, let's say, like an FTX event, a lot of that sometimes can be separated uh, from what goes on in the market. But at the same time, we also saw a drawdown in the market when FTX occurred here. Right. So a lot of the times, you know, I know, I know a lot of people want to make this case for Bitcoin and the markets being somewhat uh, disconnected. But Bitcoin is really connected with a lot of these larger equities, at least for now, you know, hopefully going down in the future as it becomes more of a usable currency. Maybe we'll see some decoupling there, but right now Bitcoin and the market are quite um, quite correlated right now. So just something to be aware of. And so that's why I'm kind of diving into a little bit of uh, equities here. And so a lot of folks are saying that we're seeing a potential downside of 10% more in equities in 2023, given the chances of recession, given what the Fed's doing with inflation. So we're not necessarily seeing a, you know, in, in a lot of folks opinion, we're not seeing a total turnaround for equities which would then say we're not seeing a total turnaround for Bitcoin in 2023 overall. Now, if we go to the Fed and what they're going to be doing, the Fed is hiking rates right now to fight inflation uh, and slow down the uh, price of goods um, and hopefully soften the labor market as well. And so if we look at what the Fed's key benchmark borrowing rate is, it's projected to rise another three quarters of a percentage point in 2023. That would be a 17 year high. And what we're looking at now is over the course of 2023, steady rate rises. I think it's likely that we've probably seen the most aggressive hikes already behind us. We had that 75 point uh, basis, basis point hike uh, not too long ago. I think that's probably the highest we're gonna see on a single basis. But over the course of 2023, we'll probably see more rate hikes, which means more downward pressure on the market because debt becomes more expensive, becomes harder to invest. You're noticing that if you're trying to buy a house, right? Mortgage rates are going crazy. You know, you used to be able to buy a house for 250K and now that same monthly payment would be on a house that's 150K, right? So you're kind of losing 100K of leverage there just with what the uh, markets are doing. Now, overall, uh, inflation has fallen uh, two percentage points in just five months, but housing prices are still climbing and services costs and costs of goods uh, are still climbing as well. Now, one of the other big things that the Fed is looking at in terms of when they'd stop rates is actually the job market. So they want the job market to, even though it seems counterintuitive, to actually cool off a bit, right? And so right now, job creation is actually outstripping population growth, suggesting that employers are actually adding more jobs than, than is sustainable, right? So there's 1.7 job openings for every unemployed individual. Now, that means there's too many few workers for too many vacant positions, right? So the labor market is going to be one of these kind of key causes of inflation, and it could make inflation more stubborn. You know, it could prompt the Fed to hike rates even higher. And so what they're actually looking for is, uh, oddly enough, more layoffs, uh, less job openings and a softening of the labor market to help with inflation as well. So um, every Fed official so far on this board has basically said that odds favor high inflation or sorry, higher inflation than lower inflation meaning prices could rise even higher than the 3.1% rate they're expecting for 2023. Now, if that happens, it's all about expectations, right? Because the markets are looking at what the Fed is expecting. If things are higher than what the Fed is expecting, that means that it's going to put downward pressure on the market 
and as well if we're seeing additional hikes at higher rates that will do that as well now if we want to look at a quick uh, calendar for when these hikes and when these meetings and information are coming out here is kind of when you need to be watching so the next big uh, moment in the market is going to be January 31st and February 1st excuse me that is when we're going to see kind of the next decision on hikes and then we're going to see these meetings throughout march may june july september october and december um as you know 2023 progresses and as the fed starts to make more decisions in terms of what they want to do for hikes so each one of these meetings are going to be important in determining where the market's going to go for the next two three months at a time right for the next quarter essentially now two more things i want to cover here really quick before we wrap things up um Obviously, the chances of recession uh, have been increasing over time for the U.S. You know, economists are saying there's a 70 percent chance of a U.S. recession in 2023. And technically, you know, last year we had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, which by definition means we're in a recession. Right. So many people are already arguing that we're in a recession. We just haven't necessarily felt the full effects of it yet. And some people are arguing that we haven't entered it yet. And 2023 will be that time where we do so. So there's just a lot of macroeconomic headwind from from that standpoint but going back specifically to the crypto market and crypto industry we have a quite a concerning development here just in the last few weeks um, where the sec actually charged genesis and gemini for unregistered uh, securities offering security offerings uh, in crypto assets through the gemini earn lending program now some of you guys might have experienced this and been in gemini they were a, a reputable company maybe they still are this a lot of this is kind of still being fleshed out but um in, instead of diving into detail on this my, my more so my point is this could be another uh, black swung event to, similar to ftx right so a lot of people are saying hey well what would cause the pullback obviously we, we talked a little bit about the ta and what could happen and macroeconomically as well but this could be another black swan event specific to the crypto market that could harm bitcoin right because you're talking about uh investors in genesis and gemini you know where, where their funds are worth billions of dollars right uh hundreds of thousands of investors you know i think if we scroll down here just in november 2022 genesis held approximately 900 million in investor assets from 340,000 gemini earn investors and that doesn't include uh the gemini investors themselves that aren't in the earn program well so as well so there's billions of dollars in this and if that gets wiped out and seized by the sec there are going to be problems in terms of price action for Bitcoin and the health of the crypto market. So hopefully all of this kind of gave you guys a little bit of a rundown on where we are. It's really hard to say whether, you know, this is a bull trap or whether we're coming back down. I would say odds are, you know, we come back down and, and test a few of those key levels we covered and then maybe head back up. But it's really hard to say because 2023 is set up to be a pretty tough year for markets overall. But thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye.